President Biden meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping yesterday, saying that there would be, quote, implications and consequences if Beijing provides material support to Russia amid the war in Ukraine. But as Russia continues its war, China and Iran are both looking to leverage the situation for the benefit of a powerful new bloc of authoritarians that has emerged to counter the United States and the West. To discuss this new axis, we are joined by former Trump campaign foreign policy policy advisor Walid Ferris and the Heritage Foundation's vice president of national security and foreign policy, retired Lieutenant Colonel James Carafano. Uh, James and Walid, good to see you both. Uh, James, to you first. Uh, the world has changed. Uh, the post-Cold -war, post War, post War construct, I say that five times fast, is it, it's over. Uh, it, there's a new bipolar world that has emerged. China at the top of the pyramid on one side, us on the other. What do we need to do now to adjust the way that we approach our foreign policy to uh, to account for that? Right, that's a that's a great question, and people should realize things have changed. This is not the new axis of evil. What what Bush describes the axis of evil were a bunch of countries that were oppositional to the United States. What we have here in the face of China, Russia, and Iran are countries that not only see the world the same way, they see uh, a vision of a world without America, that everything is good for them is bad for us, and anything that's good for us is bad for them. Mm -hmm. They're actually talking and coordinating and moving together. So this is a true axis, maybe not a formal military alliance like NATO, but this is a real axis. So I, I think there's, look, there's three things. One is we have to recognize this is a new kind of war, that these are adversarial countries, and they're never going to, we're never going to be able to do something that's going to make this turn out nice, that they're going to norm and become part of the international system and normalize. That's just not going to happen. Right. One, the second thing is we have to be strong. That means militarily, peace through strength, a strong economy, and free and vibrant nations. And the third thing, and this is the most important and the one thing that absolutely the Biden team is not doing, we have to take the fight to them. We need to start doing things so they're reacting to us rather than the way Biden does, which is kind of sit back in the beach at Delaware and wait for them to do something bad and then try to figure out how to do enough to get it off the headlines. Well, Ed, the, the administration appears really tone deaf to this, this new world, this new access. Uh, as evidence of that, uh, talk to us about Biden's New Deal uh, with Iran. And as a result, Russia, Russia's part of the Iran deal. This could be even worse than the last one that he negotiated. Actually, what is really worse, Tom, is that the timing. On mm. top of the fact that the Iran deal is absolutely against our strategic interest in any shape or form with this regime, because in the end, we are funding this regime. When we mm. open the valves and release the money to the Iran regime, under any uh, title you want, what is it that Tehran is going to do with that? Reform their economy, feed their middle class, fix the country. No, we send them that money mm -hmm. as of 2015 when the yep. uh, uh, previous administration uh, signed it. And what did they do? They bought missiles. <laughs> they bought missiles that they fired on us, on Saudi Arabia, the Emirates, and threatened Israel. So yeah. in any circumstances during the Ukraine war, you don't sign an agreement with this regime. The, the Emiratis aren't even taking our phone calls anymore because we continue to press forward with this with this uh, with with this deal, uh, James, I, I happen to believe that China is coming out on top in the Ukraine conflict uh, because it's looking steadier. Frankly, it's looking more like a rational actor than Putin. Certainly, how do we assert ourselves against against China at at a time like this? You know, I, I think actually the war in Ukraine has more implications for China's interests in Europe than it does in Taiwan. I mean, they're mm. going to do Taiwan on their timeline. Right. What they were looking for from the Russians uh, in the Ukraine war, which they were they were the strongest cheerleaders for. Remember, they never tried to stop the Russians. All they said is, look, as long as you do this after the Olympics, we're all for you, brother. But they were hoping for a quick lightning campaign that would leave Europe disorganized, divided, weakened and distracted. Instead, they they have a Russia which is which is bogged down on, even if Russia wins, the entire Russian military is going to be required to occupy Ukraine. Right. Enormous fiscal challenges um, and, and an anathema to the West. And much of that actually has 
bounced back on the Chinese. The Chinese support for right. um, for Russia has actually created a, a lot of new skepticism in Europe. So mm -hmm. I, I think actually the Chinese are not happy here. Uh, they would have been thrilled if there had been a, a, right. a rapid conquest, but the protracted conflict is actually making trouble for them. Right. And, and this, to me, is the great frustration here. Right. And it's a really important point. Russia's military is going to be spent when they're done with this campaign. Well, it's well, going to take them years or months before they can do anything again. I, I, that's a, that's an open space there. We have a window for energy independence, to reinforce NATO, get to Wally really push back here. on the Chinese. And if we would, if we just sit back when this is over, we're just we're just playing in a China's hands. I, I got I, I, Walid. I got thirty seconds for you. We saw we saw Iran lob missiles into Iraq last week. There's talk about. Uh, again, China possibly invading Taiwan. How else do you believe this this new access will look to leverage what they perceive as a weak Biden administration? Give me one example. Well, the most important example you just mentioned it, which is Iran, is going to be on steroid. It's going to act against Iraq in Syria with Hezbollah in Lebanon. Yemen, uh, of course, is, is already ongoing. But Iran also has interest in Africa. Iran right. is very active in Latin America. So we're going to see major changes at the end of the day. Yeah, they're, they're in our hemisphere. We don't tend to realize that. Waleed Ferris and James Carafano, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate that. Thank you.